our coordinator sir is busy in meeting let's aditi you can start the program yes ma'am okay uh, a very good morning and a warm welcome to our eminent speaker dr pushpa bharti ma'am our guest dr sangeeta shivastav ma'am uh, dr shelza jain ma'am dr manoj kumar tripathi sir dr uttam sharma sir coordinator of the vaishnav institute of home science Dr. Dipali Saxena, ma'am, Assistant Professor in Food and Nutrition Department, other Sri Vaishnav Vidya Pratap Vidyalaya faculties, attendees, participants, and students. As Thomas Edison, uh, Thomas Edison said, the future doctor will no longer treat the human frame with drugs, but rather will cure and prevent disease with nutrition. With these words, I, Aditi Gupta, B.Sc. Third Semester, Food and Nutrition, Sri Vaishnav Institute of Home Science. welcomes you all on the 7th day the final day of national nutrition week celebration 2020 a lecture series come for competition from september 4th to 27th now i would like to invite dr dipali saxena ma'am assistant professor in the vaishnav institute of home science to welcome our today's eminent speaker dr pushpa bharma over to you ma'am thank you aditi i'm happy to cite ma'am's profile Uh, Dr. Pushpa Bharti Ma'am. Dr. Pushpa Bharti Ma'am is a professor, Department of Food Science and Nutrition, College of Community Science, University University of Agriculture Sciences, Dharwad, Karnataka. Bharti Ma'am has 33 years of experience, including nine months as dean of the College of Community Sciences, Dharwad, Karnataka. Ma'am published about nine books, 78 scientific papers in national and as well as international journals. Ma'am's area of research are micronutrients, especially minerals, food and nutrition security, community nutrition, protein energy malnutrition, under fruits, underutilized fruits and vegetables, minor tuber crops. Ma'am is also a life member of various organizations such as life member of Nutrition Society of India, Association of Food Scientists and Technologists, Home Science Association of India, and General of Farm Sciences. Ma'am is also a reviewer of articles for. Karnataka General of Agriculture Sciences, General of Farm Sciences, Mesu General of Agriculture Sciences, and African General of Foods and Nutrition. Thank you, ma'am. Over to you, Aditi. Yes, over to you, ma'am. Marty, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Aditi, for a good start, and Dr. Dipali. for introducing me to the audience uh, this is the last day of this uh, series of lectures i am thankful to dipali for uh, putting mine at the end in fact i had requested her uh, to put mine at the end because i was supposed to go for uh, cataract operation and i was not supposed to see the screen for some time so within a short period of time i have tried my level best to put together all the research whatever has been done in the department on uh, millets in fact this topic also was suggested by dr dipali here uh, because we have worked on millets for more than uh, two decades now so uh, let me share my slides just a minute Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, visible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, my uh, voice is audible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Perfectly fine. Okay, fine. Uh, so, from the department, I mean, College of University of Agriculture Sciences, College of Community Science, I welcome all of you for this celebration of National Nutrition Week, twenty twenty one. The main theme for this year is feeding uh, smart right from the start. so this uh, this aims or tells us that feeding uh, smartly or right amount of food and right quality of food should start right from the young age so in this context uh, millets especially minor millets uh, they are the miracle grains for uh, nutrition health as well as economic security now the, if we see the history we can say that millets were the first crops which were cultivated and they are the future crops too 
they are the future crops because uh, now people are moving towards the millets from the more refined grains so earlier before uh, we invented these uh, grains millets were there right from the beginning like there is an evidence of cultivation of millets in the korean peninsula dating to the middle gen german pot uh, pottery period that is around 3500 to 2000 bc so india um, there is a mention of these millets in yajurveda texts identifying foxtail millet that was called as priyangava uh, banyard millet anava and black finger millet that was called shamaka so this uh, indicates the millet consumption was very common and it was very old dating uh, to the indian bronze age so why we have to talk about millets or why we have to consume the millets what are these millets they are the small grains uh, they are called millets because 1 million grains can be held in the palm that is why they are called as millets Milli they are so small and they are rich in benefits so they are rich in uh, nutrients non nutrient nutraceuticals and many other uh, components so they uh, reap, we can reap the benefits of these grains they are very good for food as well as for the fodder they are they form a very good fodder for, for the animals and another important thing is they are can they can be cultivated in unfertile lands which uh, Uh, do not require any inputs with low inputs and without much effort they can be grown in many areas we have seen that farmers grow these crops where no other crop can come so they the no other crop, crop can be cultivated in such lands also these millets can be grown and they provide good nutrition and compare very well the nutritional value compares very well with rice and wheat the more refined cereals and they are superior to in protective nutrients like vitamins minerals dietary fiber and phytochemicals so because of the high resistance among against the harsh conditions they are sustainable to the environment they are very good they are uh, environment friendly as well as farmers who are growing it they can sustain on this they are the crops which will help for the um, during the drought period where no other crops can come up these crops can uh, i mean the farmers can sustain on these crops and they provide cheap and high nutrition option for all the people and nearly 40% of the food produced in india is wasted every year uh, this can be reduced if millets are added like millets can stay without destroying getting destroyed for a period of 10 to 12 years of growing provided they are not processed unprocessed grains with hull uh, or husk can be preserved for 10 to 12 years so thus they provide food security and they play an important role in keeping a check on food waste so they are uh, fibrous uh, they have lot of fiber they have magnesium niacin and are gluten free that is more important for and they can be a right food for the people suffering from a gluten disorder or celiac disease and also they have high protein content it is not only the content but the quality of protein is also very good in millets because proper amino acid profile is seen in these millets so in recognizing all these factors they are considered as nutritious and therapeutic grains so millets can be classified broadly into two categories depending upon the area grown and also the size of the grain they can be <coughs> major millets are the sorghum and pearl millet whereas minor millets are uh, finger millet foxtail millet little millet which are widely exploited to a great extent whereas barnyard millet roso millet kodo millet and round top millet are underutilized they are still not exploited completely but now recently work is concentrated all over india on these four millets so these are the crops we can see the pictures of major millet and these are the minor millet and individually we can see the uh, these are the uh, vernacular names of the millets all the millets are called by different names in different languages so uh, like in hindi sorghum is called jowar pearl millet is bajra like that every uh, millet is has its own 
names and uh, i have just put this slide so that uh, the other people from other states also can get to know what is this millet which i am talking about then <clears throat> sorghum which is the major millet uh, the uh, it is the fifth major uh, cereal crop in terms of production and acreage after rice wheat maize and maize and barley in india it is used for food while the straw is highly valuable food fodder for the animals and there are many types or varieties of sorghum which are available and they are um, breeding has been done by the agriculture universities and uh, these uh, sorghum is also used uh, for poultry feed and industrial uses like uh, production of potable alcohol so it is grown extensively in northwestern western and central india southern peninsula and pockets of northeastern states maximum acreage is in maharashtra and karnataka then pearl millet <coughs> pearl millet is uh, uh, it is also called as bajra uh, and uh, it is the sixth major cereal uh, having highest drought resistance drought tolerance and it is more widely cultivated in india after rice and wheat the major pearl millet growing states are rajasthan maharashtra gujarat uttar pradesh and haryana which accounts for 96 90% of the pearl millet acreage in the country pearl millet has the largest kernels among the millets more other than the sorghum and they may be white pale yellow brown gray slate blue or purple in color Uh, then finger millet uh, the name finger millet is because ear head looks like fingers uh, they are there will be five to six fingers in each ear head that is why the name finger millet and uh, often it is the primary food for rural population of southern india and uh, eastern and central africa the grains are uh, brown to black in color darker the color more it is preferred by the consumers Uh, but it is cultivated in dry and irrigated lands which have low moisture and uh, um, the rice cannot grow the uh, lands where rice cannot grow finger millet can be grown and the grain has excellent malting properties and is widely known for its use as the weaning food now the best part of finger millet is uh, it is it is uh, it, we can say it is uh, um, it is used for both uh for weaning food uh for feeding the children as well as feeding the diabetic population or people suffering from non communicable diseases now once malting is done the fiber content reduces and it is most suitable food for the children and with fiber when the whole uh, meal of the grain is used for cooking then it can become a good food for the people suffering from non communicable diseases like diabetes and finger millet uh, the dark color of the finger millet is the major disadvantage for its usage in different products so now breeding has been done for white finger millet or light colored uh, finger millet which can blend very well with many of the bakery foods and other foods where people who do not like the red color or the dark color can consume it with uh, uh, all having all the benefits then foxtail millet foxtail millet the name comes because uh, ear head of the foxtail millet that is this ear head looks like the tail of the fox so that is why the name foxtail millet it is also called as italian millet and this millet is uh, with husk it looks similar to paddy and uh, it uh, before consumption this has to be milled and husk has to be removed and converted into rice so it is the third uh, largest crop uh, which is cultivated in semi arid tropics of asia and as forage it is grown in europe north america australia and uh, north africa uh, it is uh, the grains are uh, the husk has to be removed as i told you china grows most of the world's crop but some italian millet is grown in india japan and russia and in usa it is grown for the fodder then little millet uh, as the name uh, indicates it is the little it is very small grain among all the millets this is the smallest grain i can say and it is domesticated in eastern ghats of india occupying major portion of diet among the tribal people uh, and uh, the store is very good for the uh, cattle feed 
then comes the kodo millet kodo millet is uh, uh, again having the husk and it has to be removed converted into uh, milled into rice uh, it is native to tropical and subtropical regions of south america and uh, <coughs> it is domesticated in india 3000 years ago it is uh, extensively grown in tourist soils throughout india but it is not cultivated to any extent elsewhere uh, but it is indigenous cereal uh, to india and it is grown in uttar pradesh kerala and tamil nadu nowadays they are growing kodo millet even in karnataka and the grain is enclosed in hard cornice uh, uh, husk uh, which has which is difficult to remove that is the major uh, uh, heat in the consumption of this millet then comes the barnyard millet there are two types one is japanese barnyard millet and indian barnyard millet barnyard millet also has the husk and it is a multi purpose crop again which is used for food as well as fodder and predominantly cultivated in india china japan and korea uh, both japanese species and indian species are vigorous and they have wide adaptation to the different uh, soil conditions and moisture requirements and uh, it is grown uh, for both grain and fodder in india especially in hilly tracts of uttarakhand eastern asia and parts of africa it is uh, <clears throat> forage crop in eastern usa then proso millet proso millet is a short season crop it comes to harvest very fast in 90 days and it is drier uh, cultivated in drier regions of asia africa europe australia and north america the grain after hulling makes a nutritious palatable cereal for uh, roti preparation that is unleavened bread and also can be cooked as uh, rice this millet was grown in russia china and balkan countries northern india in historical times and later it is replaced by rice and other refined cereals then brown top millet as the name says it has got the ear edge has got brown top the top looks brown it is dark brown uh, this also has the husk and it is native of india uh, it has it relatively uh, limited cultivation in parts of karnataka and andhra pradesh and though its occurrence as feed is found in many of the other cereals it is uh, it is most often uh, grown uh, it is grown as a weed then it is primarily used as food crop in india and as a fodder crop it is finer stemmed and quicker growing than pearl millet so the these are some of the um, millets what um, how they are cultivated how they look and all that now new, coming to nutritional benefits of uh, nutri cereals or millet nutritionally they are superior to many finer cereals in protein minerals vitamins and fiber in comparison to polished rice protein and fiber content of stale millet is higher that is 12.3 and 8% and they are good source of micronutrients energy value is similar to the um, millets um, is similar to the other grains but fat is almost two times higher that is the reason why they go Uh, rancid very fast if they are uh, the husk is removed protein is higher in foxtail millet barnyard millet and kodo millet compared to rice the carbohydrate content is less in the millet and the most advantageous thing is it is very less and most of it is uh, uh, complex carbohydrate so it is a better food for management of lifestyle disorders like uh, diabetes cardiovascular diseases and obesity and it has got good amount of resistant starch 1.6 g per 100 g and we all know the advantages of resistant starch uh, over the others so compared to the finer cereals millets have more of resistant starch the fiber content is 6 to 7 times higher than rice and wheat and it helps in the reduction of cholesterol blood sugar uh, it is essential for the management of lifestyle disorders fiber also helps in the prevention of constipation and colon cancers millets have considerable amount of iron and phosphorus which are needed for blood formation and proper cell structure but the disadvantage here is uh, because of the fiber these micronutrients iron is not available to that extent so uh, they are higher in polyphenol so they have lot of antioxidant properties calcium is another important mineral 
uh, which is very high in uh, finger millet. Uh, it is 344 milligram, uh, highest I can say among all the other grains, all other grains. Uh, zinc is needed for many body functions and it is present in good amounts. Then uh, because of these uh, nutritional benefits, there are a lot of health benefits can be reaped from these millets. They contain good amount of dietary fiber, essential amino acid and fatty acid, B complex vitamins as well as vitamin E. The grains are rich in uh, phytochemicals. Uh, these phytochemicals will help to lower the cholesterol, uh, reduce the cancer risks and are effective in preventing ma and managing lifestyle disorders. And regular consumption of millet is beneficial for postmenopausal women suffering from the signs of cardiovascular disease. Uh, and uh, it's also beneficial for against the breast cancer, prevention of breast cancer. Millets are particularly high in minerals like iron, magnesium, phosphorus and potassium. Uh, finger millet, as I told you, it is 10 times higher. Uh, children uh, intake uh, of uh, whole grains uh, like millet by the children have shown to reduce the occurrence of wheezing and asthma. So <clears throat> the uh, the research which has been done in our uh, department uh, on the composition uh, effect of milling on the composition of the millet, little millet especially. Uh, so land races were collected from different uh, parts of Karnataka and they were cultivated in our lands and they were studied for effect on the milling. There was a reduction in alpha tocopherol, polyphenols uh, uh, content. Alpha tocopherol is higher in bran compared to the decorticated grain. The antioxidant activity was also, uh, uh, it ranged from uh, 19 to 24 percent in the whole millet grains. And uh, in decorticated grain, it varied from uh, 12, approximately 12 to 23 percent. Bran contained highest antioxidant activity compared to decorticated grains and whole millet grains. This is but uh, but expected because bran has got all the polyphenols in it and millets for kids and babies usually we feel that uh, they are rich in high um, and they have a high amount of fiber so they cannot be given to the babies but they are at the same time rich in antioxidants which is uh, essential for preventing the inflammation in the children and helps in muscle development of children they are rich in fiber so they prevent constipation uh, the ragi is rich in calcium and good for bone development, especially the malted ragi because fiber is reduced here and the absorption of calcium gets improved here and it's rich in uh, iron so prevents anemia in babies and kids. So other advantages of nutri cereals are ecologically safe because they do not require much of the fertilizers, uh, chemical fertilizers or any other chemicals to cultivate and they are sustainable, they are less, uh, less cost of cultivation because of reduced inputs, adaptable to climate change. They can survive and yield even in harsh conditions. They are uh, prone to, uh, less prone to press and diseases. So they are free from pesticide residues. They are, we can say they are more organic in nature. They are suitable for highly acceptable nutritious food products. Any product can be prepared with the millet. So that is the beauty of these millets. You can prepare sweet, savory products, bakery products, uh, pasta products or extruded products. Anything can be prepared. So that I will just throw some light on that. You know, the products which are tried in our lab. Uh, so what is value addition? Value addition is um, it is uh, in, uh, increasing or uh, changing the form of the product so that the value can be increased like milling of wheat, milling uh, the grains into flour or converting the fruits into jam and things like that. Production of a product uh, uh, to enhance the value uh, and uh, that is what we call as value addition and it can be addition of nutritional value, economic value or sensory value. Uh, so the uh, technologies which are developed in the department includes traditional foods, health foods, novel foods, baked foods, instant mixes and snacks of the millets. So traditional foods are those uh, like we can say millets can replace rice and other cereals except wheat because millets do not have the gluten. So wherever gluten is a must like in the production of bread, 
we cannot replace 100% rice. But sourdough bread can be prepared uh, with the uh, millet. And millets can be used with other cereals by replacing partly other cereals. The millet can be used in the preparation of product. So this is value-added products of pearl millet wherein uh, the whole grains are converted into semolina, uh, grits semolina, fine semolina and the flour. And we know that uh, uh, pearl millet flour doesn't have the shelf life. So it needs to be packed properly with uh, antioxidants and then it can stay for a few uh, weeks, I can say. Uh, then uh, popped uh, pearl millet, the uh, varieties like ICMB, these are the varieties which are developed in the uh, university. They were used for popping. They can be comfortably popped into uh, the, uh, these pops can be used for the production of uh, uh, any spicy pops or things like that. The number of products developed with uh, pearl millet, uh, out of that, Kishidi ranked first, having 95% uh, acceptability index. And then the paddu. Paddu is a fermented product similar to uh, idli, or uh, uh, but with a little uh, oil it is prepared. And uh, the spicy pops is the next uh, best product. And these are the products which were developed. There are a number of other products also developed. Totally 32 products were developed with the uh, pearl millet. Then little millet padu. Uh, this is another product which has got very good uh, uh, fermentability. The little millet has very good fermentability. So it could, uh, I mean, it results in soft product like it is. So these are the products of little millet. <laughs> for um, intervention. The intervention study was conducted uh, among the adolescent obese uh, group girls and they were given these products every day for a period of uh, 90 days uh, just to see that they, every day the same food if you give they get bored to eat every day the monotony will be there. To break the monotony these were the products which were uh, given to them and these are the foxtail millet based traditional foods. Uh, dosa, paddu, poha, or uh, um, uh, rice flakes, and kheer. Uh, and these are uh, ragi based products or finger millet based uh, products. Finger millet roti, ra uh, idli, dosa, and paddu. And uh, these are the traditional foods which were prepared with the millet. Now, coming to health foods, among the health food category, we have diabetic foods. We have developed supplementary food, sports food, and parboiled millet. So diabetic food uh, mixes were developed with uh, foxtail millet and uh, little millet. Uh, now this foxtail millet diabetic mix is in the market. It has been uh, sold in the market. And uh, all these, uh, this is the mix uh, prepared with a mix of uh, barnyard millet health mix. And this is the uh, ready, to con ready to cook flakes of little millet. And this is the khakra of, of, of uh, lit, uh, foxtail millet. So these products had the uh, glycemic index ranging from 47 to 56. Uh, the glycemic index uh, comes in the category of low glycemic index. It is 55 and below is considered as low GI. Uh, these products have the shelf life three to six months. This kakara is the product which was prepared. Uh, it is called Traveler's Treat. When the diabetic people are on travel, they can use this product. Uh, it doesn't require any accompaniment, so this can be consumed easily. So this is the parboiled uh, little millet. Little millet grains, when they were hydrothermally treated, the grains became uh, brown in color with more of resistant starch. <coughs> So this resistant starch helps in the uh, in management of uh, diabetes. But these though these looks brown in color, but once they are cooked, the rice or the cooked product looks white in color. So this is more acceptable. And the salient features of these diabetic uh, products are diabetic mix provides the same amount of calories as any other uh, cereal based food. 13% protein. 3.4% fat and 23% dietary fiber. 
this is more important and the mix can be stored for six months with a GI of uh, uh, 50 to 54. Processing of little millet with addition of hypoglycemic ingredients like pulses and spices lowered the glycemic value and parboiled little millet provide good amount of protein that is 14 to 16 grams per 100 gram and 19 to 26 grams of dietary fiber. The GI of parboiled little millet is 57 uh, index is <clears throat> is 57. So consumption of uh, uh, these foods for 30 days reduced the serum blood glucose, cholesterol, triglycerides and glycosylated hemoglobin. Barnard millet health mix uh, GI was 59 and it could be stored for three months in aluminium laminated pouches. RTC rice flakes ready to cook flakes. Uh, of uh, little millet. They provide 7 grams protein, 22 grams of dietary fiber and 32.23 milligram of iron. This iron is because of the contaminant, contamination we can say during the processing because uh, <coughs> the machine from the machinery it is added but this is available and the GI of RTC flakes was uh, 52 and could be stored for 6 months. So this technology inclusion of this developed the product in the regular diet for 30 to 45 days exhibited several benefits like it proves uh, carbohydrate tolerance reduction in fasting plasma glucose triglycerides total cholesterol glycosylated hemoglobin and with an increase in the hdl cholesterol and the products were acceptable by the con diabetic consumers target population now coming to the supplementary foods a multi-grain protein energy dense mix, mix was developed for uh, malnourished children. Uh, there was an uh, after feeding this food uh, for the children of 8 to 15 months, there was an increment in the height, 4% increment and 12% increment in weight over the control group or unfermented group. 2.5 uh, to 7% uh, was seen in the unsupplemented group. Uh, so they, uh, there was a better increment in the supplemented group. This is another product developed uh, that's called protein energy dense mix for children again. Uh, there are two mixes which were developed. This is the mix, basic mix and this was mixed with uh, uh, jaggery, then garden cress seeds uh, <coughs> and uh, nuts. And this product is used for preparing the sweet dishes and this was used for preparing the savory, uh, savory dishes. And these are the products which were developed using the sweet dish. Uh, Ladu, halwa and so many things were developed for the uh, children, especially preschool children, three to six year old children. And this is these are the products we prepared with the savory food, um, savory mix, uh, which was developed. And feeding these mixes uh, for a period of 90 days uh, resulted in the increment uh, compared to uh, the unsupplemented group. And then sports food. It's called uh, energy rich food of the sports food, uh, sports mix for endurance. And this is also in the market and it has the uh, ideal protein energy ratio for all the sports and it enhances the endurance capacity and performance of athletes. It is useful for the community as a protein and energy supplement. It provides 376 kilocalories of energy, 14 grams of protein, 4 grams of fat and 2.33 gram of fiber with the 262 milligram, uh, milligrams of calcium, sorry it is milligram, milligrams of uh, calcium and 5 milligrams of iron. Uh, this technology uh, pro product uh, was highly acceptable and proved it enhances the endurance capacity because it was fed to the, uh, it was supplemented to the sports people for 90 days and significantly improved the hemoglobin and physical fitness of the sports people. Then coming to pop sorghum, traditional health foods, uh, the sorghum uh, different products were prepared like uh, methi flavored uh, pops, seasoned pops and then tambitu is another sweet uh, and laddu. They were prepared for using the pop sorghum, uh, this one and uh, pop the health mix was developed with uh, other ingredients like the roasted Bengal gram dal, garden press seeds and uh, milk powder. And this mix, uh, uh, feeding this mix for uh, 30 days helped in improving the uh, hemoglobin status of the adolescent girls. And uh, <clears throat> ready to eat uh, pop sorghum breakfast cereal. Uh, this was uh, prepared using uh, the sorghum variety Mugad local. 
and pork sorghum contained uh, 10.5 gram protein, 2.36 gram fat, and 1.97 gram of crude fiber. And uh, the pro, uh, the plus point or positive aspect of this is it has got more of resistant starch. Then uh, AKG one red sorghum upma mix. Red sorghum is uh, uh, Atharga Kempu Jola, it is called, that is uh, red sorghum. It is very sweet in taste and it has got uh, more of fiber. So the semolina was prepared and it was standardized. The preparation of semolina was standardized uh, and it was used for the preparation of, uh, it was used for the preparation of upma mix. The upma mix was prepared which contained uh, 144 kilocalories of energy, nine, around 10 grams of protein uh, and uh, 9.8 grams of uh, uh, fat, four, five, 5 grams of ash and uh, 4.3 gram of uh, carbohydrate. It has got very less carbohydrate and it is totally gluten free. <clears throat> and uh, now coming to baked foods, and now uh, somebody was talking about uh, bakery foods and uh, now you can we can go for healthy baking healthy baking because baking is bakery foods are considered as unhealthy looking to the um, presence of uh, refined flour dalda or uh, hydrogenated fat then baking powder and things like that so we can make these bakery foods more healthy because we cannot avoid the bakery foods now the uh, it has become part of part and parcel of our life so we cannot avoid the bakery foods. The bakery foods can be made more healthy for the people. So with this view, uh, the sorghum cookies were, uh, red sorghum cookies were prepared. Traditionally, cookies are prepared with uh, <coughs> refined wheat flour. But this, these cookies are 100% red sorghum. So they are gluten free. They can be used for by people suffering from celiac disease and they are good in fiber and antioxidants. The red color is because of the polyphenol, so they are rich in antioxidants. So, <clears throat> and then this is Little Millet Cookies. This product also was in the market and the salient features, it's ready to eat, nutritious, low trans fat, high fiber, set, high satiety value and suitable for children. So, <clears throat> and this is the process. I have just given one process of preparation of the cookies uh, here. And coming to uh, then comes the muffins. Muffins can also be prepared with the uh, uh, millets. This is the foxtail millet muffin, and this is the ragi muffins or finger millet muffins, finger millet bread, finger millet cookies. 100% finger millet can be used for preparing the cookies. Then coming to novel foods, novel foods which are nowadays people are, especially adolescents and children, are, uh, are for novel foods. They do not like the regular uh, roti, chapati and things like that. They want normal foods like uh, maybe the pasta or noodles or uh, flakes. So we try to develop the uh, these foods using the millets. Like uh, flakes were developed RTE, ready to eat and ready to consume flakes, uh, ready to cook flakes and noodles and well as, as well as pasta. So novel convenience foods, uh, millets, millet based novel foods like barnyard millet based noodles, ready to cook and ready to eat uh, flakes. This is ready to cook and this is ready to eat uh, flakes and the cookies, different types of cookies were uh, developed and which contain higher fiber and uh, minerals along with slow digestible carbohydrates. So ready to eat uh, millet flakes were developed using uh, by proso millet, banyan millet, little millet, foxtail millet, as well as finger millet. So these products were high in uh, iron and so that they combat nutritional anemia and cognitive parameters will improve with this. And the flakes have lower energy, uh, fat, protein and high, <coughs> high fiber and iron over corn and wheat flakes. So these uh, flakes, uh, ready to cook flakes were converted into poha or uh, Avalaki, what we call, <clears throat> and acceptability index she says that all of them are having good amount of acceptance except ragi <clears throat> or finger millet. This also was acceptable, but not compared to other millets, it was less. I mean, this reason is because of the dark color of the 
ragi. It was not acceptable. Then <clears throat> this is the uh, red sorghum flakes, what I was talking about. Uh, red sorghum, Atharga kempujola, it is called. Uh, so these are the flakes well developed with the uh, RKJ, I mean, uh, uh, with this uh, AKJ1. And this is M35-1 is a yellow colored sorghum, which is regularly used every day. And uh, red sorghum based value added product like the like from the flakes, snack bar is prepared. This snack bar or breakfast bar, uh, it is uh, it is a quick food snack for uh, someone who is on travel and the assembling the full breakfast may be a challenge. But this red sorghum uh, uh, bar is high in antioxidants and other ingredients. So it provides a good amount of energy, protein, fat, ash and as well as crude fiber. And this is the bar prepared with uh, it is a high energy high protein bar and this is low glycemic index uh, bar having low glycemic index here for binding the uh, I mean, uh, <coughs> sugar is not used here uh, so without sugar it is prepared so it can be consumed by the <coughs> diabetic uh, uh, people also now <coughs> pasta product ready to cook uh, kodo millet pasta was developed uh, this is uh, uh, available for uh, anybody is interested to purchase the technology. They can purchase and start an enterprise. So that will help for economic security of the people. So this is a uh, the uh, gluten free it is. And the little amount of uh, wheat flour is used in this and fine semolina is used. And this provides uh, 331 uh, kilocalories of energy, 8 grams of protein fat and the fiber is 7.16 gram of fiber per 100 gram. So this is very easily can be cooked and consumed. And this is beetroot enriched kodo millet pasta. Uh, again, the same thing is used. Uh, this is also ready to use. It has to be converted into uh, the product has to be cooked and then consumed, but it takes very less time. Uh, then coming to instant mixes. Uh, like we have uh, Barnard Millet Instant Dosa Mix. Uh, so this Dosa Mix, uh, Barnard Millet Dosa is a good source of energy and protein. Dosas prepared are tasty and delicious. They can be used for breakfast, evening snacks for all age groups. So uh, ba along with Barnard Millet, uh, rice, black gram, very less of rice is used. Black gram dal, rice flakes, semolina uh, and fenugreek seeds are used here. And the uh, uh, during preparation only thing is uh, we need to add the curds and rest it for about five minutes uh, five to ten minutes or uh, if you leave it for 25 minutes you can prepare very good uh, dosa then idli mix uh, idli uh, uh, one thing i want to tell you that these peer photographs what are put here are the um, pictures of the product what we have prepared in the laboratory so barn and millet idli is a good source of protein and energy. Uh, idlis are uh, very tasty. They are very soft also and they can be used for breakfast and evening snacks. And <clears throat> this also can be prepared by um, adding uh, 50 ml of curds and then whisking for some time and leave it for 25 minutes and then prepare the idlis. Then this is barn and millet custard powder mix. Usually custard powder is prepared with corn flour. Uh, the corn flour uh, doesn't provide much nutrients compared to barnyard millet. So the barnyard millet custard was prepared where uh, barnyard millet uh, starch or the finer flour and then whole milk powder and other ingredients were used uh, in the preparation of this uh, mix. And it provides a good amount of uh, energy uh, per 100 gram of the mix, this is uh, 23 grams of protein, 3 grams or 4 grams of uh, fat and uh, 1.5 gram of ash and 1.4 gram of uh, fiber. But it is a good source of iron, 12.16 milligrams of iron you can get. But one serving of custard powder, uh, custard to prepare that, we need 10 grams of the mix and it instantly it can be prepared. Then... <coughs> Next is instant proso millet dosa mix and this is uh, prepared with, uh, 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 it is rich in protein and fiber. Proso millet, rice, black ram dal, uh, fenugreek seeds are used in this and uh, as a uh, modification of this mix, 
we have also prepared the instant prosomelet mix with uh, drumstick leaves so that uh, product will be little greener in color but very tasty and it provides a lot of uh, nutrients especially calcium and iron then prosomelet pudding mix was prepared uh, with uh, <clears throat> it has got good texture uh, soft uh, texture and the, uh, this is dry mix powder and it is able to provide the protein and energy now prosomelet uh, starch or fine flour skim milk powder and other ingredients are used now even the pudding can be prepared one serving of pudding uh, 11 grams of the mix is um, used uh, for preparing one serving and it uh, comes out with desired consistency uh, within a short time then uh, laddu from low fiber health mix there are two mixes which were developed one is low fiber health mix from kodo millet and high fiber health mix low fiber health mix is converted into laddu and it can be uh, used for the children for feeding the children it has got um, along with the low fiber uh, fraction of kodo millet it also has little millet green gram dal soybean and milk powder so it is very tasty and children will definitely like it then uh, thali peet is another product which is prepared with the it is a mix a high fiber mix which is uh, very much beneficial for the diabetic people it has got a high fiber fraction of kodo millet daikokum wheat um, jowar or sorghum and black gram dal with soybean and spices now in this uh, low glycemic index uh, spices or uh, spices which lower the glycemic index are used Uh, like um, fenugreek seeds jeera or uh, cumin seeds pepper and all and then brown top millet laddu uh, though the um, gray ear head is brown the grains are not brown they are slightly greenish in color so um, brown top millet flour is mixed with bengal gram dal sugar and cardamom to prepare the uh, laddu and these have the shelf life of 3 uh, months then coming to snacks prepared with the uh, uh, millet uh, usually the snacks are prepared with refined uh, flours or uh, um, uh, pulses especially besan laddu besan laddu is prepared with besan uh, obviously and um, uh, along with besan uh, which is rich in uh, protein so we can uh, replace part of it with the uh, with the millet so that it is another alternate for the use of millet this is very tasty and uh, but this will it can be commercialized and this is how the commercialization was done the millet laddus were prepared in large quantity and they were packed and sold to the end. Uh, it was done by the enterprise as an enterprise then burakki holge it is a sweet product which is stuffed and fried and this is a traditional sweet which is prepared in karnataka this part of karnataka northern part of karnataka this is also uh, this is prepared with the uh foxtail millet and papads are prepared with uh, many millets i have only shown the little millet papad here uh, so the little millet papad also can be uh, can become a um, enterprise then novel little millet uh, chakli uh, chakli is the muruku or chakli is usually prepared with rice so the rice can instead of rice little millet is used here then nippattu is another product prepared with rice and uh, little millet is used for preparing this product so this is the this is how the product is prepared in large quantity and packed and sold so the constraints are points to be considered for enhanced consumption with all these products the main purpose of preparing these so many products is to make the consumer consume these uh, nutritious grains but in spite of that the consumption is very less because availability and con con continuous supply of nutrient cereals is missing here i just want to tell you that britannia people had come forward to the university to our department and they wanted to take the technology but their problem was where do we get this uh, this much of millet they need large quantity so availability of the raw material is a problem here so processing and storage of the grain is also difficult Uh, and region specific acceptable recipes uh, should be made uh, on commercial scale and the problems of high fiber intake especially for children will affect the mineral absorption so possible solutions are encourage the farmers for cultivation of wheat cereals and direct procurement from farmers like contract farming is 
better option for getting these uh, raw materials. Inclusion of region-specific millet, like finger millet for Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Uttaranchal, uh, Orissa, uh, then initially in small quantities, uh, and then later it can be increased. Installation of destoning or grading machine. This is what we have installed in 2012 uh, in a near uh, place very close to Dharwad, maybe around 200, 150 to 200 kilometers from here. It is installed uh, there and he is processing nearly 90 quintals every day. Uh, so the millet processing unit, uh, the processing unit will also help to enhance the availability of millet. It provides food security, increases the entrepreneurship, augments the uh, millet consumption and improves health and welfare of the population. So eat millets, stay healthy. This is the uh, take home message what I can give you. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you Deepali and uh, uh, others for giving me this opportunity for considering me to be a part